Tonight in Arkansas, there's a mother tucking in her daughter and turning off the light. A business owner is burning the midnight oil. An at-home dinner date is plating up possibility. And it's all happening under one roof. How? The power of a conversation. Like the one John from Integrity Solutions had with First Horizon Bank about his vision for a sustainable mixed-use building. Now it's not just words, it's life. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash John. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. A client met his banker to discuss opening a restaurant in a busy airport. In us, he found a partner that understood the importance of reaching for the sky. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Did you happen to come across an item in the paper recently that read, Underground Nuclear Test Held, Yucca Flat, Nevada? United States scientists detonated an underground nuclear device today that was barely felt away from this Nevada test site. Spokesman for the Energy Research and Development Administration said that the test was a success and that no radiation had leaked into the atmosphere? I tell you this because that's not the whole story. That blast set off a series of reactions, incredible reactions, about which you'll be hearing more in a moment. Richard, don't tell me you've actually found what you and I were looking for years ago. I have, Mac, in the flesh. I've actually seen it. Good Lord. It's a real breakthrough, Mac. You know, if it hadn't been for you, you, you got me started in the anthropology game in the first place. Well, it's unbelievable. You know, this is going to turn man's history upside down. Our mystery drama, Yesterday's Giant, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis and stars Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. According to the papers, the underground nuclear experiment was a success. Of course, they had to say that. If the truth were known, the hue and cry from every American might have been such that but I get ahead of myself. What really happened will be told us by James McLean, who knows the story better than anyone on Earth alive today. I'm James McLean, explorer, naturalist, sometime geologist and anthropologist, and author. Also an advisor on seismology to Nevada University. I suppose I wouldn't have gotten into this if it hadn't been for the unfortunate scandal of the Utah man, about which I may go into later. But I want this part of my life known because it proved to me when it comes to choosing between being a true scientist, hungry for knowledge, or someone else hungry for money, I did make the choice. It all began with that telephone call. Hello, McLean here. This is Richard. Richard Gidding. Hey, Richard. Sure, it's nice to hear your voice after all these years. Mac, how are you doing down there in Yucca Flats? Oh, so-so. Not too exciting. Well, congratulations on the book. It's tremendous. The title's just great, Life and Times of Early Man. It's got a great cover illustration. <laughs> Did you get past the cover? <laughs> you kidding? I read it straight through. It's tremendous. Well, I I'm pleased, Richard. Six years went into it. Listen, how did you know I was here? Oh, I keep all my old address books, even the ones ten years old. So I just chanced it and uh, called. Say, uh, Mac, you still buddy-buddy with those energy research boys at the flats? Yeah, I do some seismological research for them from time to time. Good. Are you, uh, very busy these days? Well, I don't have to tell you what it's like being a freelance. An awful lot of time can go by with no money coming in. So you're not working steady, huh? Yeah. You remember that Utah man business? It didn't help me. Well, of course I remember, but uh, 
That wasn't your fault. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with you being the best in your field. That book of yours sure proves it. How's it selling? That's the old Richard, all right. Always an interest in the financial return, huh? Oh, I'm not ashamed of that. Anthropologists eat like everyone else. Uh, Richard, what's on your mind? You didn't call me just to congratulate me. No, I didn't. Have you got a university full-time job to offer me? Better than that, Mac. I'm going to offer you a partnership in something worth millions. What? It's tremendous. No, 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 no. Don't say no. Don't say yes. Don't say maybe. Hear me out. I've located what I believe is the greatest anthropological discovery of the age. What you and I suspected ten years ago. Now, wait a minute. I can't believe it. You got a car? Yeah, I have. Good. Listen, you leave tomorrow morning. How long does it take you uh, from where you are up to, uh, say, uh, Carson City? Oh, about uh, 18 hours. Is that where you are? From Carson City, head over to Fernley, then north on 34, past Pyramid Lake. Take a right on 49. Richard, don't tell me you're back in our old town of Sulphur. <laughs> I sure am. Same old boarding house, Mrs. West. Will you start in the morning? Uh, Mac, this is what we were looking for 10 years ago. Tremendous. I've seen it with my own eyes. It's alive, Mac. What? You heard me right. Alive. Good Lord. I had to let you in on it. If it hadn't been for you, Mac, well, you got me into the anthropology game. Uh, Richard, I did understand you right. Yep. A living specimen of prehistoric man. So you just get up here as fast as your wheels will take you. <laughs> I couldn't leave till a day later at sunup. Since that phone call, my mind was filled with what Richard had said. The dream of science for a thousand years. I remembered the two of us, years ago, smitten by the great Huxley, searching for any evidence of prehistoric man in northern Nevada. Well, I went to Utah and did find a skull they called the Utah Man. And that was something that I'd like to forget. Hey, Mac, you're looking tremendous, buddy. Welcome to old Mrs. West. What kept you? You're not married or anything, are you? No, no, no. <laughs> Took a little time to get my gear together. Well, I'm glad to hear it. That means you plan on staying. Richard. Richard, tell me about it. Just that I found a live, prehistoric Neanderthal specimen. And not only the male, but its mate. And two offspring. Good Lord. I'd say he was of a mixed type. Part Neanderthal, part modern. Well, you saw him walking? He walked right into my tent with his mate. It was later I saw the offspring. He walks erect... And I don't have to tell you, if he's a Neanderthal, he's every bit as intelligent as you or I. A good deal more, I'd say, to have survived. This family, I think, must have lived in the caves on the far side of the Jackson Mountains. There's a hundred thousand acres up there that's never been explored. Any idea why they came to you? Oh, very good idea. And that's why I need you. Last month, your EIDA people down in the flats set off a nuclear underground test. My guess is the shock waves ran along for 300 miles in the substrata and jolted those caves. And these guys probably came out to see what was going on. Yeah, but where are they now? Last Monday, they disappeared. Not a sign, not a trace of them anywhere. I searched as much as I could above Massacre Lake. Vanished. All right, now what do you want me to do? Find out when the next nuclear test is going to be held. When we know, we go up to where I was last time, make camp... And wait. Hmm. You know, I might be able to get that information. Remember Arthur Fairchild? Yeah. He gave up geology, joined the army. Now he's an important wheel at Yucca Flats. Oh, sure, I remember Arthur, but... Now, look. Don't say a word about what I told you. Don't worry, I'm not talking. I've gone out on an anthropological limb before. I'm not making that mistake again. <laughs> I left what I'd brought up with Richard and shot down the Yucca Flats as fast as I could. Since I'd done some observations for the ERDA, it was no problem to get to see my friend, Captain Arthur Fairchild. Mac, I appreciate the seismic report you're handing me. But on someone else's say-so, no instrument readings? I don't know. Richard Gidding is as reliable as they come. If he tells me he observed shock waves that far north, why should I disbelieve him? As far north as the Jackson Mountains... Mac, this is our second year with these tests. We've never had a report on effect to surrounding terrain. Well, maybe the seams are giving way. We know there's a fault that runs north diagonally from here. Anyway, Mac, what difference does it make? I mean, if you like, we'll give you the instruments and you can go up and record. Uh, what do you mean, if I like? Uh, 
I put it badly. Of course, anything to add up to our store of information, we naturally appreciate. Okay, agreed. Now, when is your next explosion planned? Mac, you know I can't give out that information. Oh, come on now, Arthur. What am I going to do, sell it to the Russians? That's high-priority, top-secret stuff. Yeah. So you want me to go up there with all the measuring gear, and I'm just going to sit around with geophones on my head week in, week out, waiting, huh? I'll have to clear giving out that information. Besides, I don't think you could get set up there in time anyway. Well, your grant me is damned important. Certainly. If there are weaknesses that run along, say, a fault for hundreds of miles, sure we ought to know about it. I wish I had verification before next Tuesday. Huh? Oh, oh next Tuesday? Uh, that's the date, then, huh? I never said that. No, I, I know you didn't, Arthur, and I, I appreciate it. But if I just happen to be 300 miles north of here on Tuesday and uh, energy research lets loose another test blast, and I just happen to record the seismic reactions. Well, it'd be criminal if I didn't let you have the results. I wouldn't say you are devious, James McLean, but you sure know how to get what you go after. <laughs> Arthur, you make me ashamed. And after all, the way you went to bat for me on that Utah man business, I don't know why I was hesitant in trusting you. There are P and S waves, and I'll record them. But there's more to it. Gidding thinks that he's discovered some very primitive ape man, or perhaps even primitive type Homo sapiens. Oh, uh, how complete are the remains? Arthur, listen to me, not fossils, alive. Now, it seems that your last test caused quite a tremor up there, and these creatures came out. So that's the truth. Why, I had to know when your next blast was due. <laughs> I felt better about taking Arthur into my confidence, and I was sure that Richard would understand. Arthur was one of the few people who was all for me, and he realized if I made any verified anthropological discovery now, it would help me get back some of my professional status. I pushed the car to the floorboards, made it back to Sulphur in record time. Next Tuesday, huh? Well, that's better than I could have hoped for. Where do we make camp? I'll show you. Uh... There's one thing I haven't told you, Mac, and I've been sort of hesitant until I was sure that you were all the way gung-ho on this. Of course I am. I don't have any reservations. I'm not quite sure when you say that this discovery would be worth millions. What I haven't told you, Mac, is that this Neanderthal head sits on top of a nine-foot giant. Oh. Your Neanderthal is nine feet high? A living Gigantospithecus? On the hoof. He squatted on the floor of my number 12 space tent right under the awning. All 700 pounds of him. His wife, alongside. She probably weighed close to 500. That's incredible. Then Weidenreich and von Koenigsvar were right. But to find them... I mean, to find them here, living. Not just some enormous molars and skull fragments as they did in China and Java. My idea, Mac, is when that Tuesday test explosion goes off, we carry on like ordinary campers... Keep our eyes peeled and cameras ready. I'm setting up two cameras with Tri-X film. One in the tree and the other in the tent. Once triggered, they'll automatically shoot an entire magazine load of pictures. Yeah, I brought a camera, too. Listen, have you been communicating with your Neanderthal giant? That's going to be your department. You wrote the book. Well, I can have a go at it. But trying to become acquainted with any untamed, uncivilized specimen is risky. He was very quiet and peaceful when he dropped in. So was his wife. I gave them food. They let me follow them back to where their offspring were. Two seven-foot offsprings. You know, there's no guarantee. They may take it into their heads that I'm an enemy. That's what this is for. A revolver? With special bullets. But they use the tame elephant bulls. Knock them out. Shoots a tranquilizing drug. There's no need to tranquilize them out. Just run. Can't have them doped up. We want to make careful notes. Observe them. Study them. That isn't exactly my idea, Mac. What? I'm going to capture this prehistoric man and his family alive and exhibit them. James McLean is shocked beyond measure at what he considers a betrayal of everything science stands for. What can he do now? If he leaves now, he may miss the discovery of a lifetime. If he goes along with exploiting a rare living relic of prehistoric days, he'll be through as a scientist. I shall return shortly with Act Two. 
Buffalo Wild Wings has deals on deals on deals. Like buy one, get one half off wing Tuesdays, buy one, get one free boneless Thursdays, and wing bundles from $9.99. Order now at buffalowildwings.com. Sometimes man will move in one scientific direction and quite unexpectedly, something quite unforeseen will result. Call it a fluke of fate, but certainly the nuclear energy test in southern Nevada triggering the discovery of an extinct species of man is proof the unpredictable can happen. To say nothing of the pairing off of two men of totally different values. I thought Richard's idea of capturing the Gigantopithecus was such a far-fetched and flamboyant gesture, I dismissed it. By Tuesday, we had made camp. I'd set up my recording gear, and we waited all day for the blast to go off 300 miles south. Beyond where our tent was pitched loomed the jagged mountain cliffs. Far up, out of sight, were rock shelters, caves of limestone, and bear caves. In one of these, we hoped, lived our Neanderthal family of giants. What time is it? Uh, ten past seven. Oh, boy. It's like waiting for the end of the world, isn't it, Mac? Yeah, more like the beginning of the world, Richard, if we see them. Mac, it's one thing to write a book on the social behavior of primitive man like you did, but it's quite another to see it in action. You want to have material for a real on-the-spot prize winner this time. Who knows, maybe a Nobel Prize. Well, I don't expect to get more than one visit or two with this creature. Books are written out of a lifetime of study. Mac, you heard what I said before. You'll have a lifetime of study right in the cage with them if you want. I hope you're joking. I am not. Here's a chance to have my cake and eat it. Tremendous. I wouldn't stand for being mocked like you were over that Utah man business. Somebody planted that skull in your digs. You know it. Well, it's all past and done with now. I'm talking about the purpose of this expedition. Richard... Why did you want me? Because, old friend, I may flush him out of his hole. But you're going to tame him. Wow. There she goes, the nuclear test. They've done it. We're going to be rich. I sat there, holding my flashlight on the seismograph, recording the primary and secondary waves. I figured the P waves were traveling from the flats at seven miles a second, and the S waves at about half that. We were also getting some Raleigh waves, which had the capability of traveling around the world half a dozen times before dying out. It was as though an earthquake had hit, about four on the Richter scale. The ground lurched, rocks came spinning off the cliffs, the seismic waves were causing a great deal of slumping and compaction where we'd pitched camp. In five minutes, it was over. That was twice as bad a reaction as the last one. It sure should have done it. Uh, done what? Stirred up our Neanderthal friends. They ought to be coming down here. You glad you came back? Well, we all have our reasons and responsibilities. What do you mean by that? The earth shock gave me a record. And that's one of the reasons I came. Perhaps it's also given you what you want. That's fine. More power to you. To both of us, no? As soon as the giant Neanderthal shows up... I out. will not be here, Richard. You won't be here? What do you mean? Just what I say. As soon as it's light, I'm packing up and going. Tomorrow morning? You, you can't go now. Oh, yes, I can. I don't belong here. What are you talking about, Mac? I need you. Richard, you're planning to take this creature, whatever he may be, and put him on exhibit. You don't care if it's a primitive man or a giant gorilla so long as it's marketable. Now, what are you talking about? Of course I care. And the pity of it is, if indeed you've made this unheard of discovery, and it is a gigantopithecus. Richard, it's a prize of the world. The possibilities well, what are... did I tell you? But it needs to be observed carefully, examined by scientists in its native habitat, cared for, and above all, respected. Well, who says he won't be? I know what the possibilities are. They're tremendous. I'm not going to exhibit this guy in a carnival circus atmosphere. What do you think I am? I've got big plans, buddy. I'm going to have an entire building constructed for it and its family. Once it's captured, I'll be in touch with every state in the Union. 
See who'll make the best offer. This can be a one-of-a-kind attraction. Tremendous. A 200,000-year-old fellow for the year 2000. I'll have engineers come up here the best there are. Get pictures from every angle. I want to duplicate the exact habitat, the actual caves this giant's family lives in. Get experts on feeding, run in a sound system so that to his ears, it'll be like he never left home. I've given a lot of thought to this, Mac. Now, of course I respect the animal. What do you think? But for money, not for science. For both, you square egghead. Why are they mutually exclusive, huh? Now, all I'm saying is, for the trouble I'm taking to preserve this thing and make him and his wife and kids happy, charge a little admission. What's so terrible about that? Perhaps to you it isn't. But to me, Richard, that is not how a scientist goes about his work. It's not first to make a buck and second to add to the world's Mac, knowledge. Mac, 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 I can't do this without you. You're the expert on communicating with primates. Well, I'll get you another man. When? I need him now. As soon as I get back home, Richard. Are you serious about this? Checking out in the morning? I was never more serious about anything in my life. Wake up, Mac. Mm. Time to get up. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. I slept later than I thought. Uh, what time is it? It's almost six. If you're going, get going. I, I don't understand why you're so sore about this. I mean, Richard, we're just... Just two different people with two different ideals, that's all. You got your stuff back? Yeah, yeah, most of it. Why are you getting your duds? I'll stow your equipment in the car. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What's your rush? Last night you were begging me to stay. I don't want to get in the way of your ideals, Mac. Besides, I want to get started hiking up to where I think the gigantic Pathicus holds up. So before I leave... I'd just like to give you a hand before you go. Now, wait a minute. How about a cup of coffee for the road? There's a diner and sofa that'll be happy to serve you. Uh, did you say that you were on your way to the Neanderthal's cave? I'm not going to hang around here waiting for him to visit. If that explosion worked, he may be out there having a look around. Yeah. You know, Richard, I'm, uh, I'm not in that much of a rush. Why don't I go up there with you? I can start back later. You sure won't inconvenience you? I don't want you to change your plans on account of me. Richard, you sure are in a funny mood this morning. Well, not half as amusing as you are, old boy. Last night, I was the sinful Neanderthal flesh peddler, the untouchable, the unscientific Mr. Big Bucks. This morning, please, can I come along and see? I'm curious. I don't deny that. Good Lord, any scientist worth his salt would have his tongue hanging out of what you say is up there. Is up there. See that straight wall of granite? Yeah. Well, I figure somewhere up in there must be their cave. Around the side is a big shelf, like a ledge covered with bushes and trees. That may be their way in and out. I never got up that far last time. Where did you see them the last time? Right here. Where we are standing. This is where Mr. Big led me. And his mate behind him. And over there were the two younger ones, sunning themselves. Wait a minute. You were hoping the explosion had an effect. I can see fissures in that cliff from here. I'll have a go at the climb, then. But I'll need uh, both hands to hold on, so uh, would you take my gun and wait here? Where's that uh, knapsack of fruit? Uh, here, take it. Now, listen, are you sure that you want to climb up there alone? Well, I think it's smarter that you wait here. I mean, in case of trouble. In case of anything. To come up here is my decision and my party. And I've got enough bananas and apples and dates in this bag for quite a wingding. All right, here goes. It's clouding over, Richard. Richard. Looks like a storm coming up. Did you see anything yet? I'm almost at the top now. Richard. What in heaven's name is that? I think it's him. Commanders. My old friend. The jelly green jelly. Richard, 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 can you hear me? Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Richard, Richard, say something, 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 something. Richard, Richard, Mac, Mac, be quiet. 
quiet. Are you all right? Why didn't you answer me? Get down, get down. It's that with the Gigantopithecus. I heard him all right. Oh, yeah. He's got some voice. You think we're safe here? Oh, it depends where he is. If this is a prehistoric creature, his sense of smell is highly developed. Hey, wait a minute. I have a thought. If you want to make friends, do what you did last time. Take all the fruit out of your knapsack and line it up on the ground here. If he gets a sniff, it's possible he'll come forward to take it. The way I'm going to work it is when he reaches for the fruit, I come out friendly-like. He knows me, you know. And then, pow, I give him a shot of the tranquilizer, and he's out. Yeah, but what do you do about the rest of the family? If they come looking for Daddy? Huh. I haven't thought that through. I could put them to sleep, too. Richard, I... you have got a couple of thousand pounds of gargantuan flesh up on this plateau. How do you aim to get them to civilization? You haven't thought that through, either. Look... Don't do it. Let's observe. Merely observe, okay? I got a few more things to work on. Yeah, yeah. My problem has been I, I didn't want anyone else to know about this, but the, yeah, yeah, I'll need trucks, I'll need cranes, who knows what. Don't think about capture. It's unrealistic. And you might get hurt in the bargain. Now, look, I, I, I brought my camera. Let's you and me just sit here and wait. No, no, you can wait if you want. Now that I know he's here, I'm going back down to get organized. I've got to work something out with some road builders. First, we build a road, and then we can get a big moving van up to the plateau. Richard, you're absolutely crazy. Don't think of it. Don't start something you regret. Mac, the only regret I have is that I didn't think of all this sooner. All right, I'll see you. Richard! Richard, come back! Richard! disappeared, I realized it was true. It was one of the giant species of Neanderthal, well over nine feet tall. I watched as it took Richard inside its cave and rolled a huge slab of stone across the entrance. Now was the time to put to practical use my theoretical knowledge of how to communicate with a primitive brain. One thing was certain. If I wanted to get Richard out of that cave, I'd have to go in after him and get him. So James McLean is faced with the problem of spanning hundreds of thousands of years, dealing with a member of the human race who has been able to remain on Earth centuries after he was supposed to have disappeared. And were there more giant Neanderthals up in those Nevada mountains? If so... How many? I shall be back shortly with Act Three. In the northern part of Nevada, the largely unexplored mountains are rocked by seismic shock. A giant humanoid, resembling a Neanderthal man, had taken a modern man captive. Anthropologist James McLean is faced with the problem of rescue. The irony of it all was, Richard, who thought he would capture the giant alive, was himself captured. I needed help. The only person I could entrust with the secret and who would get us maximum help in minimum time was Arthur Fairchild. I put in a long-distance call from the nearest town. Incredible what you tell me, Mac. Arthur, we've got to get Richard out of that cave if he's still alive. Heard anything? Seen anything? No, not since yesterday. This morning, I climbed up there before phoning you. The cave is still blocked off. I better come up with some army sharpshooters. No other way. Or blast them out with dynamite. Sharpshooters? Dynamite? Arthur... Listen, there's got to be a way to do this without killing anybody. Look, uh, can you come up yourself, alone, and say, will you bring a couple of bushels of apples and as many bunches of bananas as you can lay your hands on? Let me get this straight. You want me, apples and bananas, but no guns, is that it? Please, Arthur, use your head. There's got to be a solution that keeps everyone alive. 
and we've got to find it. I had a frightful nightmare last night. I lived it again. The entire episode of finding that skull in Utah, staking my reputation that it was a Cro-Magnon fossil, only to find out I'd been hoodwinked by someone. Thank heaven I woke up before the dream got to that awful meeting of the National Academy, being accused of trying to get rich and famous at the expense of science. The disgrace of it. Oh, I woke up in a cold sweat. Arthur! Arthur! They had no trouble finding you at all. You must have driven all night. And why not? You want some coffee, some breakfast? Uh, no, I've been nibbling on bananas all the way up. Well, let's get started. Where to, Mac? Well, did you figure out what we could do? The answer's here in the back of my car. You came alone, I hope. Do you see a troop of cavalry coming up the pass? Of course I came alone. What about Gidding? He's still in there. As far as I know. The uh, poop is this. I talked to our engineer boys, and they advised, drill a hole and smoke them out. So I brought up all the equipment. Smoke? Look, I don't want them choked to death. It's a new kind of smoke bomb. It has just the reverse effect. It impels those who breathe it to violent action. Oh, I get you, sure. My feeling was, if this giant man or animal is strong enough to move a boulder to close the cave, with a little encouragement, maybe we can get him to open it. I know you said don't, but I also brought along two rifles, just in case. Arthur and I lugged the equipment up to the plateau. Generator, five-gallon cans of gas, lights, a drill the size of a jackhammer. We had to make three trips. It was getting dark by the time we had everything connected and the generator ready to go. Give the starting rope a long, hard pull, Mac. The way you start an outboard motor, lawnmower, so we can get some juice. Now, I plugged in the searchlight facing the rock so we can see what we're doing. Okay, here goes. Great. Lights, camera, action. I'm going to try for a hole near the bottom. You get tired, I'll take over. it makes. Is that what it sounds like? Well, we can't wait for applause. Hold on, Arthur. I'm trying to figure this. This primitive fellow may react violently if he thinks he's being attacked. Otherwise, he's really a peace-loving jet. In two minutes, I ought to be able to drill through this boulder and shove in the smoke bomb. Two minutes? Well, I'm worried about what he may do to Richard. Richard Gidding? Richard Gidding! Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Thank God he's alive. Richard, we're coming in for you. It's going through like butter. It won't be long. Hey! Arthur, stop the drill. Richard? Richard, are you okay? I'm all right. The jelly giant hasn't touched me, but it just took off with the whole family. What do you mean, took off? It's on. There are passages back of the cave here, right through to the mountains. Oh, that's bad luck. He's gone. And we were counting on getting the Gigantopithecus so riled up with your smoke bomb, he'd push the boulder away. Now, how do we get Richard out? Very neat, Arthur. Very neat indeed. you made a very good circle of holes. Okay, my turn. Don't you want the drill? What do you think you're doing with those rocks? I thought I'd try to crack the boulder between the holes you made. Now, stand aside. Mac, no way. It's getting daylight. I'm rested now. I'm going to start up the drill. How's it going? We're going to do some more drilling. Hey, Mac, listen... Listen, don't. Don't start out yet. I think I hit the old man coming back. Richard, now listen, don't panic. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to shove some bananas through some of the holes that Arthur drilled. I'm not hungry. No, I'm hoping to appeal to the big man. Richard, duck into some corner and make yourself scarce. Okay, Mac. He's coming. I can hear him very plainly now. Eight holes. That makes eight bananas. I hope this works. Now we'll take the apples you brought, Arthur. And the rest of the bananas and, and spread them in a circle in front of the cave. There. That's right. That's nice. 
Do you think that Neanderthal giant is going to open the cave and sit down with us for a meal? I wouldn't be surprised. I think I'd have a bigger appetite if I climbed up this tree. Do you mind? Arthur, trust me, eating is second nature to every living creature. It's rare indeed that any living thing is attacked while eating. Now, let's give it a try. We'll never get a chance like this again. Okay, you're the expert. Pass me an apple, will you? I knew I had to communicate with the giant creature. Reassured we meant no harm. Zaborowski and Houghton both agreed that Neanderthal was capable of articulate speech. Now, all the speculations, inferences, and theories would have to give way to the real thing, actual practice. I would have to reason with the Gigantopithecus, using my language to reach his understanding. The big boulder in front is moving. He's pushing there. What did I tell you? He's coming out to get some more food. Great God in heaven. Will you look at the size of it? Look at that head. Those hands. Oh Hello. Old man. Brought you some bananas and uh, apples. Help yourself. Oh. Sure. Sure, take two. Take as many as you want. I can't believe my eyes. It's sitting down with us. I'll tell you something, old man. All my life, I dreamed of going back in time to meet you. Yes. And I didn't have to do it. You came out of time to meet me. You know, I... I think he's really enjoying himself. Arthur, Arthur, get up slowly. Very slowly. And go to where we put the duffels. Now, in the one with the green stripe is my loaded camera. Will you bring it to me? Sure. What's he doing? He's getting up and taking a handful of fruit back to his family in the cave. Richard! Richard! When the old man's with his family, all the way inside, you come out. Okay, I get you. Here's your camera, Mac. Now, boy, glad to get out of that cave. Hey, Richard, are you all right? Nothing broken, huh? Uh, I was more scared than bruised, believe me. Uh, Yeah, listen, you remember Arthur Fairchild as Richard Gidding. Oh, yeah. Arthur was the man behind the drill. I I saw the big man go for those bananas. That's tremendous. In, In a minute or two, I expect the whole Neanderthal family will be out. Now, look, there may be other families. Who knows how far the caves go? You know, the more I think about it, the more I believe Washington ought to set up some kind of uh, special preserve here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why cut Washington in on this? Like a wildlife preserve, is that what you mean? Well, isn't that what this would be, really? Here they come. Is that the mother? Yeah. That must be her two sons. It's a nice family group. Now, watch the birdie. Excellent. One more shot. Now, if Mac can get them more to say cheese, we'll have a family of Neanderthals, all smiling. When we ran out of film and fruit, it was time to go. The giant Neanderthals returned to their cave. The sun was high now. We were pretty tired. We'd been up most of the night. We carted the gear down, hand over hand, down the side of the cliff. And then one last climb up to the plateau to make sure that nothing was forgotten. Arthur? Where's Richard? I was going to ask you. He's not down below. Richard! Richard! Hey! hey. Richard! Huh, that's strange. Where could he have gotten to? Isn't that him? Coming out of the cave? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. What's he got in his arms? Hi, folks. Meet baby Neanderthal. Oh, Richard. Richard, are you crazy? You can't steal their baby. They'll kill you. They'll have to catch me first. I'm going to put it in my knapsack and carry it over my shoulder all the way back. You put that baby back where you got it. Do you hear me? They're not going to miss him, Arthur. Here, hold the kid while I strap on my knapsack. You're here. mad. Absolutely mad. Now, look. You put it back, Richard, or I will not be responsible. The whole family's out foraging or something, so I went to the cave and helped myself. This kid is worth a fortune. No, I said, give it to me. I'm ready for it. I'll give it to you. Oh. Phew. What a wallop. He went down like a stone. He sure wasn't ready for that. We put the Neanderthal baby into the cave and went back to camp. 
Most of the rest of the day, we tossed around the idea of a national preserve. Would Washington guard the area with access only to bona fide scientists and researchers? Richard was very quiet and hardly said a word to us all day, all evening. The next morning, he was gone. We've walked clean back to the cliff and not a sign of him. <laughs> He's some character. Well, he could have gotten lost. Good Lord. Look up there. Uh, Pass the boulder. Let's go. He fell over there. Which way now? Keep going. Just around these trees. There he is. Richard. Richard. Oh, wow. Well, he's dead. That's a broken neck, all right. Falling all that distance. He was up on the plateau. What was he doing up there? Was Richard trying once more to kidnap a Neanderthal infant that had gotten caught? Did he try to make a run for it? Escape back down the cliff, lose his grip and fall? Or was he pushed? We never found out. anything else, Richard's stubbornness and tragic end convinced Mac and Arthur of the hopelessness of their cause. Even if Washington agreed to a guarded national preserve, there would always be a Richard, someone who didn't really care and who'd do anything to exploit these ancient giants. So, our two friends decided to keep what they had seen a secret and that they would never divulge to anyone the road to yesterday's giants. I'll be back shortly. If, as some historians and anthropologists believe, the Neanderthals, that intelligent species who inhabited the Earth thousands of years before we did, did not all disappear, then this story could be true. And as for Arthur and Mac, every time an experimental blast was touched off, Arthur would wonder how the old man and his family were taking it up there on that hidden plateau. James Mac McLean, he's writing another book, actually revising his old one. The Life and Times of Early Man. Only this edition will contain some extraordinary photographs. Our cast included Norman Rose, Ralph Bell, and Howard Ross. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. There is some kind of nuclear activity going on up here, and it isn't on our side. I'm going to find out who's responsible for Wynne's death. What did Ottawa say? Well, they had a little surprise for me. Before I was able to finish telling them my suspicions, they brought me up to date on the latest international developments. It seems that Russia has already charged the United States with the same thing, nuclear occupation of the Arctic. Oh, that's crazy. It's... It's obviously a preemptive move on their part to divert suspicion from them. Oh, I don't know. They've lost a couple of ships and a plane in the same mysterious way that wind vanished. Joe, some strange force is causing the polar ice cap to melt. And if we can't stop it, the results will be catastrophic. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant
Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.